Hello and welcome to another Adobe tutorial hosted by Gabriel Wagner. Today we are covering my favorite piece of software from Adobe, Adobe After Effects. Adobe After Effects lets you make a bunch of cool videos. You can make like lightning shit out of people's hands or you can make some simple motion graphics, which is what we're going to do today with the Cast TV logo. So we're going to start off here on this new project screen. I'm just going to double click where it says project. So let us import our footage, that empty gray box. I've um, already navigated to my tutorial folder. The tutorial folder will be in the description of this video. Here we're going to highlight everything here. Actually, you know what? We're going to highlight everything except for this .ai file. I'll get to that in a little bit. Click open. And here, this mp4 file, we can view our finished product. Let's go back into our project folder. We can just go, actually, you know, let's just do manually. Double click here. It'll take us back to our import screen. Now this time we're only going to import this. Now note how it says format illustrator PDF EPS. This is an illustrator file. This is the actual raw logo file that was designed in illustrator by uh, Nick Musa of Cavs TV. And we are going to import as footage. Click open. Now it'll give us this fancy new menu. This is only for .ai files. So the way that we're gonna import this is gonna be as a composition. So it will actually carry over the layers that he was editing in his document over into our After Effects program. It's the same thing with Photoshop files. You can actually have your different layered Photoshop files. If you don't know what that means, it's fine. You don't really have to. If you know what that means, then you'll understand how great that is. So now you can see two new files propped into our project viewer here. We have new logo layers and we have new logo. If you see this little, I think that's a circle, a red square and a green triangle, that just means composition. It doesn't really matter about the symbols. It's just, this is the symbol for composition. Composition is kind of like a mini project, right? So we can see on this timeline, it's new logo. That's our composition. And we can see one, two, three, four different files here. Small note that I forgot to include in my intro. When you are starting off your composition, make sure to click this tile button right next to your active camera. It is very important. If you do so, if not, then everything will look very weird. You should see a white checkered background. If you take a look on the left side, you can see that only two of these eyes are enabled. These eyes control whether you can see them or not. It's kind of hiding or showing. So we know that layer 10 controls our head. In order for this to work, we're gonna have to use layer 10 because layer 10 has all of our components. Layer 10 actually contains like, you know, the little chin, uh, the little hat, all these are as individual files. That's just within the Illustrator document itself. So we're gonna right click on this. We're gonna click create and we're gonna click create shapes from vector layer. Now what this does is it's gonna take the data from Illustrator and create these shapes. And you'll notice if I scale up this text, you can press S to open up the scale menu and scale. All it does is it's a parameter that every single part of a, an After Effects project has that controls the size. So if we scale this all the way up, you can see that around the S it's, um, it's being compressed. That's just at the file that it was stored at. And when you try zooming it in, you lose quality. The reason that we're using a vector image convert to vector layers, right? When you convert it to a vector layer, you actually never lose quality. So let me actually change this. Um, well, if we were to zoom in on it, it wouldn't lose quality. We're going to zoom in on it a little bit, but let's first get all of our other stuff sorted out. So how do we change it so we don't use quality for, for Cast TV? Well, we're going to have to import our text individually. What this means is we're going to have to go into Illustrator and highlight that text, and it'll carry over with all its formatting. So we're going to want to go to Finder and navigate to where we have our project saved. I opened up our tutorial directory. This is the one that you'll find in the description of the video. And then you want to double click on this new logo.ai. AI means Adobe Illustrator file. So let's open up Adobe Illustrator. You have to have this installed for the tutorial to work. And now we will see our beautiful logo here. So as you can see, there's actually a bunch of different layers, all the ones that got carried over into After Effects. We have our text layer. We have our head over here. So in order to import our text into After Effects into a medium where it does not lose quality when you scale it up, what we're going to have to do is import the text, you know, as text. 
not as an image file. So in order to do that, we're going to double click. And now, just like if you would in a Word document, you're going to highlight it and you're just going to command C it. In order for this to work, you have to leave Illustrator open. Then we're going to go back over to After Effects. We're going to do Command T, which is our text tool. You'll see it actually change up here to this big T. It means our horizontal type tool. We're going to click anywhere in the document, press Command V. It'll take a little bit of time. And eventually, our text will be imported. Now you can see, oh, what I did there was uh, I went up to the top. This is our toolbar. This is where you can just change what your mouse cursor does. And I changed it to the selection tool. The selection tool is basically just like regular mouse pointer drag and drop. So we can actually drag this over. And you can see it's a one for one copy of what's there. However, the big difference is if we were to scale this up, note how even though it's super big, these are still very smooth, very crisp lines around the sea. This makes it great for logo animation. So what we're essentially going to do is reconstruct this logo out of files that After Effects can use and not break when it scales up. Now we're going to replicate this coverage you can count on slogan at the bottom. So it's the same process. We're just going to go back to our Illustrator file, go to our coverage you can count on, highlight it, Command C, back to After Effects, Command T, click, Command V. Wow, I'm glad you guys didn't see that part because it took much longer than it should have. So let's just go over, do the same thing, go back to our selection tool. And you can see it's a one for one match. I would say the weight is worth it since it looks so good. And just like we had with the Cast TV, if we scale this up, we will lose no quality. Look at that. That used to be tiny, tiny text, and it still looks great even at, what, 2.5 thousand times the scale. So let's just drop that back down. Now, if we click on that eye that we were working with before, we can actually see that our text stays the same. The only thing that changes are the lines. So in order to fully replicate this logo, we are also going to have to draw lines. After Effects actually has a great tool for drawing lines, and this is called the Pen Tool. All right, so now we're going to want to go back to our bar up here. We're going to want to navigate to our Pen Tool. You see it looks like a little ballpoint pen. In order for this to work, make sure that when you scroll down at the compositions here, you have no layer selected. In order to get rid of it, like let's just say you have this one selected. In order to deselect it, all you have to do is click on this gray space outside the layer, and you see everything will be gone. So now we're going to click on a new Pen Tool here. We can actually already see some of the parameters coming up. We have our fill, we have our stroke, all this stuff. We're going to be messing with that very soon. Don't worry. And you can see the star next to this pen. That star means we're going to make a new shape. In our case, we're going to make a new line. So let's just click here, click here, brand new line. Let's go back to here, deselect, pen tool, shape, shape, here, deselect, here shape shape so now we can see we have three blue lines where our cav cv lines are now how do we go from this which you actually if i got rid of the cav cv lines and i deselected this you actually see nothing there oh wait, hang on whoops that's not what i meant to do you actually see nothing there you can see the little outlines but how do we turn outlines into actual lines well, all we have to do is tell After Effects to start shading those lines in. So you'll see at the top here, we're going to see Fill and Stroke. Stroke is what controls how thick these lines are. And if you put a line to zero thickness, it's not going to be there. So let's just set this to, I think two should be fine. And if I deselect this, now you'll see some very thin but noticeable lines. Uh, maybe we'll do one thicker. Let's just do three stroke. And I think those are some pretty solid looking lines. Let's compare that to the original. There's the original, there's our version. Perfect. All right, so I'll call that done for now. We can actually go to our layer 10 outlines, which is our head that After Effects rendered. We can just call this head. We can scroll up to this thing where it says shape layer one. This is our line, so we can call these lines. In order to rename them, uh, I mentioned before, you're just going to press enter or return, then type in whatever you want to name it, and then press return again. So how do we go from this to animation? Well, first thing we want to do is make sure that we have our canvas set in an animation resolution. 
in order to change the overall size of your document. The keybind is going to be Command K, or if you don't like using Command, you can go to File, Composition, my bad, and then Composition Settings. You see that right there, Command K. That's on Mac. I believe on Windows, it's Control K. I'm going to click on there. Now you'll see all the preset settings here. Preset Custom, 722. The only reason that these numbers are the way that they are, they'll be the same for you as well, is because that is the resolution at which the original document was made. So we're going to change these up a bit. We're going to change Preset to HTTV 1080p. You can do 29.97. 29.97 just means 29.97 frames per second. That looks better than 24 or 25 because more frames per second means higher quality. We're going to click OK here. You can see it got noticeably smaller. If you're wondering why that is, that is just because everything, if you have something at a smaller resolution, you put it on a bigger resolution canvas, that thing has to get smaller in comparison. So if we want to make this thing fit to the scale of the general document, and if we try highlighting all these things and press S, which opens up a scale menu, and we just drag this out, whoa, what, what's happening there? Well, you'll notice these little dots everywhere, these little crosses. This is a cross, this is a cross, whatever. And these control the anchor points. So if, let's just look at a specific example. If we look at the anchor point for our head outline, right? Notice how the head is up here. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can press Z to zoom and click a couple times. Note how our head is up here, but our anchor point is down here. So that means like if I were to rotate it, you can press R to open up the rotation menu. Note how the head spins around that point. Now we don't want this. We're going to fix this later on. But in order to move everything together, what we're going to do is we're going to group everything. And we're going to do that using a parent object. So how do you make a parent object? We're going to go to, at the top, Layer, New, Null Object. A null object is basically nothing. It just exists as this white little square that you can't even see. All right, let me close all that out. And press Enter, Rename it. Ah, oops, got to highlight it. Enter, Rename it, and we're just going to call it Parent. Doesn't matter what you call it, you can call it wherever you want. This is where we're going to change the properties and the groupings of the files underneath. So I don't know if you're going to see this. This is called the pick whip tool, this little squirrely kind of narrow to looking thing. If you do not see it, you're going to want to right click on this gray bar at the top here. You're going to want to go over columns and you're going to want to hover over parent and link and make sure that is checked. So now all we're going to do is we're going to take this little pick whip tool, drag it onto parent. We're going to do this for every single person. So now once you finish that, you can press S to try and scale. And notice how if we scale the parent object, everything else scales proportional to the parent object. So boom. Now we can move all our objects simultaneously while also keeping them all together. So when you find it at a scale that you personally like, I think for me, 250 is good. It takes up most of the screen, but it's not going over the borders here. We can close that out. And I think the next change we have to do is to change this black cavalier. So in the logo that I made, it was red. In order to change the contents of a shape layer, just like remember how we did the lines before, this head is of the same material as these lines. So you can change it in the same ways. When we did the lines, we changed the stroke. But since stroke is not applicable here, there's actually no outlines for these little blue lines that run around we can change the fill instead. So currently it is set to black. You're gonna to wanna to go to the top of your window. You can click on this little black box and it'll open up the shape fill color. So you can actually drag it around to pretty much anything you want. We did a dark red for ours around there. And if I deselect that, just by clicking on the square space beneath, you can see that that is a nice deep cavalier red. We're gonna stick with that for now. You can change it to whatever you want. It could be purple, just not blue because that'd be reef and reef is our competitor. So we don't talk about them. So now that we have our image scaled up, it doesn't lose quality. How do we animate? That is a great question. Our first step is going to be animating that Cast TV text. If we go back to our original reference video, you can see that when the Cast TV text comes in, 
it kind of spins its way in as well as fades in. So you can see spins and fades. It's a very sleek, subtle effect, but it almost seems like it vaporizes out of thin air. So in order to animate text, we're going to want to highlight it. Click on this drop down menu right next to it. Make sure that you're highlighting Cavs TV because that is what we're going to be editing. This big text that says Cavs TV. Click down here. You can close the transform menu. We're not going to need that. So we're going to click on this animate tool here. Click on enable per character 3D. And while it may look a little spooky at first, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it. We're going to click animate again. Then we're going to click animate rotation. So that means for each character, if we go down here, it's going to automatically highlight. We can change the rotation. And you see how each character per character uh, animation, per character 3D, they all change on their own schedules. So we're going to set this to 90 because we kind of start almost out of view. Now, I know you can see a little bit of these characters. We're going to solve that in a little bit by making it fade in as well. So now I guess it's a good time to mention our music. In our original video, we had this music that synced up with our rotation spin, right? It was timed with that little guitar strum. You hear that? So we can change that. We're going to drag in our MP3. We can just drag that in at the bottom here. Let it go. So we're going to know right there is where we want our text to come in. You can actually hold command if you want to listen to the audio or control if you're on Windows. So we know at this point, our text is going to be at position zero. So we want it to be fully visible. We can work backwards from here. We're going to click this little stopwatch and we're going to come back maybe about here, I say. You can kind of guesstimate in your head. Now here, we're going to want to type 90. So now if you see over this interval, our text is going to spin around. So now this looks very rough right now. It kind of comes from being like in existence and then it kind of spins out and it just doesn't look good. So in order to make it seem like our text is fading in, we're going to use something called opacity. I've mentioned opacity before. If you've seen my premier tutorial, opacity just controls how visible a clip is. It's like how see-through. So if you make it 100% opacity, it's 100% see-through. So we're going to click on animate here, then we're going to go to opacity, and then we're going to drop opacity to zero. Zero means it is completely see-through. It's not opaque whatsoever. There's no uh, there's no light that's able to reflect off of it. And now we're going to go back to the end of here. We can actually hold shift. You can even see our little squares moving, even though we can't see our text because that's it's because the opacity is zero. We're going to hold shift, set our opacity to 100. That means that over the course of the spin. It's going to fade in. That looks great. So now our last step is to change these keyframes to something maybe that doesn't look so mechanical. See how it kind of just like goes and then it just stops. We're going to want to highlight these just like you would drag and drop files. Right click. Then we're going to do keyframe assistant, easy ease. Now you're going to see that they change from diamonds to these little hourglass looking things. And they kind of smoothen out the transition. I'm not sure if that was, you guys could see that, but it smooth out your transition. In general, I would recommend using easy ease keyframes. They're just great to work with. So that's cast TV done. Now we have to animate our coverage you can count on. And that kind of comes in in our original video. So that just kind of comes over that like nice guitar riff. Let's go back out of Cast TV here. Let's go do coverage you can count on. Same idea here. We're going to go to animate, enable per character 3D. And I believe the way I did it here was, see how the text kind of flips up? It's the same idea, except we're rotating it on a different axis. So now we're going to click animate rotation. And I believe I edited this on the X axis. Yes, I did. So we're going to set this to 90. We do not have to keyframe it because we are going to use something new called the range selector. 
So if you notice when we did our Cavs TV, all of our text moves at the same time. And this is great if you want to do a transition like the one that we did. But if you want it to kind of come up per character, like what we did here, covers you can count on. Oh, let's we'll see. See how it comes on per character? We're going to change this using our range selector. So our range selector will modify which text has this rotation effect applied to it. So it'll have three parameters, start, end, and offset. The one that we care about is start. So once we get to the place where we want to start, <laughs> kind of funny actually, we're going to want to click on this, stopwatch. And right when we want it to stop, we're going to set it to 100. Oh, not a thousand, whoops. So now if we watch that back, I like these just because I like doing it. We're going to do easy ease, and this one will probably be more noticeable. You're going to see that it's going to get slower in the beginning, faster in the middle, and slower at the end. So you see how it kind of eases into each of the transitions? That's where it's got its same from. So I guess the last problem we have to fix is you can see these little texts kind of hiding down there. We're going to do the same thing that we did with CASV. We're going to change our opacity. Now what we're going to do is click here, add, oh, yeah, add opacity. Opacity is going to be at zero. And when you add opacity, note how we're not doing it at this animate here. We're doing it at this add. If we do it within this add, that means that we're going to animate that. Op opacity is going to change alongside our rotation. So it's going to change the opacity and the rotation at the same time. Now note how this works with our range selector as well. So when we change which text we want to animate, that's what our range selector does. At 40% it's going to animate the, the character 40% through the text that we're looking at. And then it's also going to animate the opacity. So by keeping it within animator one, it actually does both of those things simultaneously. So let's go back and play through the entire thing. So now all that's left to animate is the head and these bars. So I say, let's start with the head. We're kind of going backwards here and we're leaving the bars for last, but eh, the head's more fun to do anyways. So for the head to work, we're going to animate position. Now, since this is not text, we are going to not use that, um, that animate button that we were using earlier. So if you want to animate an entire video clip, and this works for any kind of video clip, it could be a shape like this head, or it could just be like two video clips stacked on each other. You can change their positions. So if we press P, and you're going to see this position is set to 0, 0. We can drag this up and down. So the one on the right is going to be your Y position. The one on the left is going to be your X position. X position moves it left and right. Y position moves it up and down. Now, I guess, counter to what you might believe, up is negative. Down is positive. Now, this doesn't make sense if you're looking at it from like a math standpoint, like what you've learned in math class. But from a technology standpoint, it means that it's a negative 33 pixels down. You always measure down. So we're going to go up to the top by making this a large negative number. And we're going to let it sit here. Now, since it's sitting off screen, it's actually not visible. So if I play it completely impossible to see. So now we're going to make that drift down like it did in the original video around when this coverage you can count on things animating. So we're going to click on this keyframe for position. So now we're going to change this position value over time. And I think at this point it should already be settled in this new home. Let's press zero. Zero we can just set the position to. So now if we play it back. So now we'll really get to see the power of easy ease here. If you know how it just kind of goes and then it just clunks into place. It's a little too aggressive for my tastes, so we're going to highlight these, right click, and use easy ease. So now let's take a look at how it looks. So much smoother. 
Um, I guess our last step is animating those black bars. So we're going to go over to our lines here. The way that I did it in the original videos, you actually see the bars come in and fade in. So they fade in, they fall down, and then they stay with the text. All this stuff happens. And then they expand a little bit at the end. Very small amount. You can actually barely see that. And then the entire clip fades out. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with our opacity. Opacity can be edited by pressing O when highlighting something. Oh, no, no. Oh, was it not O? Oh, well, we're just going to click on this drop down menu and do it manually. So our opacity can be edited by opening up this drop down menu, scrolling down transform, finding opacity. We're just going to drag this to zero. Let's go to the beginning of our clip where we want these lines to come in. And I'll say they'll come in with a piano riff, right? Click the stopwatch. Maybe set this to 100. So it'll fade in pretty quickly. That already looks pretty good, but I think we need a little bit more motion when it's coming in. So alongside the opacity, let's also change our scale. So we're going to click the stopwatch. Let's set our scale to pretty big. I would say maybe about 125. And then we're going to set this to 100. So it's going to go down in scale. It's going to be big and it's going to kind of fall in. So look. Now, I think you guys noticed that, but I could definitely use some easy ease. You see how it kind of just clunks into place. Highlight both of them, right click, assistant, easy ease. Oh, actually, that needs a little bit more work, doesn't it? Still came in pretty quick. That's just because our time interval is short. So if we actually drag this further back to the beginning, these two keyframes here are starting keyframes. If we're able to highlight the first two keyframes and we can drag this back, we can simultaneously change our scale and opacity values. That looks a little better. Although now I'm going to show you guys an advanced technique to very uh, to tune those details to your heart's content. So we're going to highlight both of these. We're going to click on this thing. It's called the graph editor. So our graph editor lets us change the position over speed times. So we're going to click fill graphs into view right here. And we want it to kind of ease in at the end. So we're going to want to drag this out. And you see how our slope is lower down here. This means that if we play it back, ah, whoopsies, let's show that. The transition is a bit less forceful. The one that I'm animating here is our scale transition. So you can see it kind of comes in quickly and then it starts slowing down and it stops. I can even make this more profound if I do something like this, or it kind of comes in very quickly and it slowly eases in. So we're going to do the same thing with our opacity here. Oh, here's our scale, my bad. Let's push this back like this. Now we will see our scale using like this. See how it's much faster in the beginning, much slower at the end? That looks fine for now. So you can just click on this graph editor to go back. That's your logo almost complete. All we have to do is add the fade in at the end. So we have only one option for this. We are going to take this and we are going to stack compositions. So in order to stack compositions, what you do is you're going to drag in this new logo, which is basically equivalent to everything that we've edited here is in this little file right here. We're going to drag this in and we're going to drag and drop it into this, the exact same logo. And it's going to make a double composition, right? So everything that we've had edited here is now in this thing right here. We can actually click on it and it'll open up back there. So what can we do in here? Well, now After Effects thinks that this entire thing is one video. So we can change all the properties. We can rotate, we can change the scale, we can change the position. And this is for the entire video, this is for everything in it. So let's leave the position the way it was. I kind of liked it there. And now, just like we did in our premiere, we'll be faded out clips by changing the opacity over time. We're going to do the same thing to this entire composition. 
So now let's listen to where the music kind of starts fading out. So I think around there we can start fading out. Pick opacity. Set that to zero. Now you'll see we have a nice smooth transition at the end. Perfect. So now that we're here, we're going to go back to this white checkered background that I mentioned earlier. And notice how if we toggle this transparency grid and we turn this off, this is what's actually going to be rendered. If we actually go through, the only thing that we're going to see is a red face because that's the only thing in our composition that isn't black. So how do we solve this? What we're going to do is we're going to put a white sheet background behind this entire thing so that it's not transparent. How do we do this? Well, as fun as it would be to go on the internet and look up a white picture, After Effects has actually thought of this before. So we're going to go over to Layer, New, then Solid. All a solid object is, is just like a solid color. That's basically what it means. We're going to want to click Make Comp Size. That means Make Composition Size. And I don't know why it's purple. Let's just change this to white. So it'll automatically change the name to White Solid 1. We're just going to call it White doesn't need all that salt stuff at the end. I'm going to click OK and everything is going to vanish. All we have to do is we have to change the order of the layers. So the topmost layer is the one that's going to get displayed first. So now if we play this back. So now how do you get your awesome logo out of After Effects? Well, we're going to want to click on File. And then we're going to want to go to export. And we're going to want to go to Adobe Media Encoder Q. Unlike Premiere, After Effects Renderer isn't all that great and it doesn't give you a whole lot of options. So we're going to want to go to Media Encoder instead. It's much more flexible for what we're going to do. We're going to wait for it to fire up. And so once Media Encoder fires up, it'll actually take a little bit to import this new logo thing. Just be patient, it eventually will happen. So we can see here our output file. This just controls where we're going to save it. I want to save mine not to Untitled Project Amy. I want to save mine to a tutorial. So there we go. I'm going to click Save there. Uh, all you need to know is that we need this H264 to match up, right? So if we click on this, it will stay on this dynamic link server thing for a bit. Just be patient. There we go. If you do not see H264 on your format, you just want to click on Format here, H264. Match source, high bitrate. You can leave that how it is. Click OK. And if you see all your settings here, you've changed your output file, click on this play button. And just like that, you have your video exported and ready to view. We're gonna to go to Finder. I'm gonna go check out our new logo 2.mp4. And just like that, you've animated your first motion graphic using After Effects. You can use this for basically any video you're working on to give it a nice, sleek, professional logo. Thank you for watching. My name is Gabriel Wagner, and this has been How to Adobe. Bye.